Good morning, my beautiful friends and family. Welcome back to another full day of eating as we bulk as a vegan bodybuilder. As you just saw, I made my traditional breakfast, which is carrots, celery, and spinach juice here. So I got 32 ounces of that. And then I did a new smoothie today. So I got this fruit blend of pineapple, peach, pears, and blueberries. And I mixed it with the Silk Ultra milk, which is fire. And then a scoop of Evil Life protein and the Evil Life creatine, and a little bit of cacao nibs to finish it off. So I'm excited to bring you guys along with me because today I'm gonna show you every single thing I eat throughout the entire day. I'm bulking, like I said, and I've been adding a good amount of weight. Yesterday, I just made some sweet PRs on a chest day. Today, we're doing a back day. So I'm gonna show you how my physique is looking and then also stick around for later in the episode because I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up the perfect macros and calories for yourself for whatever your goals are gonna be, whether you're gaining weight, muscle, or you're trying to lose fat. Stick around because we're gonna get to that. But now, I'm gonna drink these and then we're off to the gym. Okay, so another workout in the bag. It was a super solid back day. So uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me to give a little more details on my workouts. So today for the actual workout, I did 100 reps of pull-ups in about 10 sets of 10 reps. Then I did seal rows with the barbell. I did three sets of 10 reps with a really tight squeeze at the top. And then I did inverted dumbbell rows. And then I did my rear delts and my biceps. But today, what I wanted to show you guys is a super solid bicep burnout. Because a lot of people always ask like, how do the vegans always get such big bicep peaks? and I don't know if it's something to do with what's in the food or if it's just our workouts, but here's one of my favorite burnouts. So take a kind of light weight, put it on a barbell and start with either a wide grip or a narrow grip and do six reps, then switch to the opposite grip, whether you're doing narrow or wide, and then do six reps, and then switch to reverse grip so that you're doing forearms and do that for six reps, really squeezing tight at the top. And if the weight is a little bit too light, then really let it down slow, but give yourself a full stretch at the bottom so you can feel that bicep stretch. Squeeze your triceps so that you get the full bicep stretch and then come back up. Do that for two or three sets and your biceps are going to be on freaking fire. It is one of my favorite ways to overload the muscle. So try that out next time and go get yourself some of those big, big and bicep peaks. Okay, now we're going home to get a quick post-workout snack and then we are going to dive into the big meals for today. Okay, so for my post-workout snack here, I've got two pieces of toast. One has avocado on it, a little lime juice, and then, I, I don't know if you guys saw that everything seasoning, bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's. I don't know if you guys ever tried that, but if you haven't, you need to go to Trader Joe's and get it. It is freaking fire. The other piece of toast is just a culinary mess. It's just a rush on a piece of toast, but, if you guys watched the last full day of eating, I made a lentil soup, but I made improvements on it. So what I did this time is I added a cashew cream, which is literally just water, cashews, and nutritional yeast blended. And then I threw that in there to add some creaminess. I also threw a couple drops of liquid smoke in there, and then I blended about a quarter of the soup while it was still in there. So that way it all comes together as like more creamy instead of so much lentil chunks. So if you want that recipe, go to the last full day eating. Toast with soup is just one of my favorite things in the world. Okay, so I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna work on my investment channel, which if you didn't know yet, I have an investment channel. It's called Brian Turner Invest. I have a video to film and to edit. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna get to this next meal. Okay, so for this next meal, this is a sweet trick. If you've never seen this before, I'm about to blow your mind. So first off, we have some of the Sprouts High Protein Tofu. This is super firm instead of extra firm, so it has a ton of extra protein. But you can do this with any tofu. You can just get the normal extra firm. What I did is last night I froze this, and then this morning I just let it sit and thaw, and then just now I pressed on it in a towel so that I got all the water out. And when you freeze it, it expands the water molecules inside and kind of uh, like aerates the tofu. And then when you thaw it, it basically just makes the tofu tofu more spongy so that when you cook it, it gets extra freaking crispy. So our plan here is to make some tofu fries in the air fryer. So I'm gonna cut it like this. 
Okay, so I basically got some french fries right here, and then we're gonna make some real french fries over here. Okay, if you've watched the channel for a long time, you've seen this bad boy, but this is a french fry press. So we literally are gonna put a potato right there, spin this down, and we're literally gonna create french fries. Just like that, look at this. Look how perfect those shoestring fries come out. So sick. I think it was like 80 bucks, I don't really remember. And it seems kind of expensive, but it was the most worth it thing I've ever gotten in the kitchen, maybe other than like an air fryer and a pressure cooker. So we're just gonna do two of these pretty large potatoes. And now we season. Okay, so this is my go-to seasoning. It is super simple. It is cumin, chili powder, and paprika. You really can't overdo chili powder and paprika. You can overdo cumin, so be careful. Cumin is kind of like this, like taco seasoning kind of a flavor. It's really good. But you wanna only do maybe, I would say, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon if you really like it. But when it comes to the chili powder, you can just go crazy with it. You aren't gonna overdo it. So I would do maybe a, a teaspoon to two teaspoons and the paprika. I would do about half of whatever I do with the chili powder. And seasoning is what makes everything taste like 13 times better than when you were a baby and you just learned how to cook. So I'm gonna do the same seasoning for these tofu fries. Both of these are gonna go into an air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for, I'm gonna say about 20 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna check in on them. And so I'm gonna take this, put it in the air fryer, and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. And 30 minutes later, look how good this is looking. These fries are perfectly crispy. These tofu fries are seriously crispy. You guys know me, or maybe you don't, but you're about to find out. I'm the ketchup. Oh man, I'm a ketchup master when ketchup comes out right. There we go. Now we're cooking with ketchup. And there we have it, there's our meal. All right, so it's crunch test time. See how crunchy this actually is. Oh, also Sam's got a little plate too. Yep. Just having some of the tofu and fries. I'm telling you, when you freeze, then air fry tofu, there's literally no better way to do tofu, especially tofu fries like this. So freaking yummy. Also on the plate, as you saw, I have some Brussels sprouts that are tossed in balsamic vinegar and some corn. Both of these were cooked in the oven at 425 for around 30 minutes. Super simple, literally just toss them in tons of balsamic vinegar. You can't overdo it and then roast them. But yeah, we just weighed ourselves and I uh, wanted to update you guys on my weight. I am 194 pounds, 195 pounds. Right now I'm dehydrated a bit. I just finished my workout and all that kind of stuff, haven't drinking a bunch of water, which is really good because we're trying to get over 200 pounds again and we're slowly moving up. But in my opinion, I'm still pretty lean, which is right on track. So definitely want to get to 200, but stay lean and then get to 205, 210. And that's where you're gonna start seeing me get a little bit more fluffy. You guys, definitely try this out. You're gonna freaking love it. The tofu trick has never let me down. All right guys, so this last meal is actually a classic. It's a Chipotle style salad bowl. And so this is a plate of mixed greens. This would actually do better in a bowl except it's gonna look better on a plate, so that's what I'm doing here, but use a bowl if you can. So you're just gonna start with a plate of greens, and then in this bowl here, I have a can of cooked black beans, and then a little bit over a cup of brown rice here, about a cup and a half of brown rice, and then I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of some taco seasoning, and that's what's gonna make this kind of have a bit of flavor here. I actually ran out of TVP, which is textured vegetable protein, but if you have that, or if you have access to that, just hydrate that, add taco seasoning, and then that's basically gonna be like, your ground beef. But since we don't have any TVP, we're just going to do all black beans and all rice. Okay, now we're gonna make a cream sauce to go on top of this, and then we're gonna finish with some extra topping. So check this out. All right, so in a little bowl here, we have about a cup of cashews with a little bit of water, and we microwaved it just to kind of soften the cashews. We're gonna add maybe about two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and then about half a tablespoon of lemon juice, or about like half a lemon. Okay, and then I get to use my fancy emulsifier. We're just gonna blend this up. All right, so a little bit messy because we have kind of a tiny bowl here, but this is a basic nacho cheese and it is really, really good. Okay, finally I have some homemade pico de gallo. I make this every single Sunday, so I have a gigantic batch of it. I've shown how to do this before in the past. If you just check out some of my older full day eatings, you'll see my recipe for it, but a couple healthy scoops of this and add it to the top. Some red cabbage for some color and a couple of chives to finish it off. I don't know why it got so freaking cold, but it is freaking cold outside. I'm also barefoot. I'm a weirdo. And so my toes are very freaking cold. So let's do this real quick. You could pretty much put this cashew cream sauce on anything and it would be amazing. I don't know, what's the worst thing that you could possibly eat in the whole world? Okra, I hate okra. You could put this all over okra and I could eat a whole plate of it. That's gonna be controversial. So this 
big old meal. It's going into my mouth, going into my belly. Let's go inside, you and me. We have something to talk about. Okay, back in the dungeon. The final thing that I'm doing is I'm taking some of my vitamin D3 and my omegas just to make sure that as a vegan, I don't go ex-vegan at any point. I mean, like you've seen in this video, I've been having a lot of nuts and seeds today, but I feel like it's always good insurance to have omega-3s and then D3. None of us ever spend enough time in the sun, let's not lie, as adults. None of us are playing out in the sun as much as we should be. And so I like to do insurance. If you guys ever want to check out my favorite supplement company, the one that I'm sponsored by, it is Absolute Fire. It's Vivo Life. They have everything from proteins to multinutrients to vitamins like vitamin D3, B12, omega-3, ton of other things on the site. Check them out. It's a great way to support my channel. It's Brian10, which will get you 10% off. And I'll put a link in the description below. Now, before I dig into my meal, I wanted to talk to you guys about what I said earlier, how to set up the perfect macronutrients so that you can gain muscle lean or you can lose body fat, but maintain the muscle that you've worked super hard to gain. Now, depending on where you go on YouTube, it's going to get super confusing because some people are gonna say this ratio is better. Some people are gonna say this way is better. Some people are gonna say you should do keto. Some people are gonna say you there's so much different information and I wanna just make it simple for you. I've been lifting for over 12 years and I've been able to keep my physique exactly where I wanted to go with it. Go on Google and search in TDEE calculator. That's total daily energy expenditure calculator. You're going to fill that out with your age. You're going to fill that out with your activity level, your weight, all that kind of stuff. You're going to click calculate and it's going to give you a number. Now this number is never perfect because everybody is different. Everyone's metabolism is different, but it's a good starting point. You're going to take this number and depending on whether you want to gain weight or lose weight, you're going to add 250 calories or minus 250 calories because this number that it gave you is the maintenance number. That's the amount of calories you need to eat to not gain or lose any weight. Okay, so now you have the amount of calories you need to eat. Now you're gonna go on Google and punch in, ironically, Team Keto, K-E-T-O, calculator, and you're gonna go to the first web page, and then instead of clicking the keto calculator, you're gonna click the macronutrient calculator. Now basically all that this is gonna do is you're gonna put in the amount of calories that you want to eat, and then you can change the macronutrient ratios. That way you can know what macros to hit. It'll give you your target macros. Now, depending on what you wanna do, this is kind of up to you to play with it. But for me, as a vegan and someone who's been lifting for a really long time, and someone who does pretty vigorous workouts, I go with a high carb thing, so I go with something like a 60% carbs, 20% protein, 20% fats. It's gonna give you your, it's gonna spit out all your macros and now you have your calories, your macros and you can go forth with that. Basically, every single week you're gonna see if you've been able to gain weight or if you're losing fat, if you've been able to lose weight and you're just gonna adjust. If you're not gaining weight, add a couple hundred extra calories a week. If you're not losing fat, if you're not losing weight, then take off 100 or 200 calories and do it for another week and see if those numbers move the way that you want. And by the end of a few weeks, you are literally gonna have your perfect macronutrients and calories. And that is simple as that, super easy. If you guys enjoy these full day eatings and you like the recipes that you're seeing in it, you should definitely check out my recipe book. It's called Eat Vegan or Die Trying. It has 39 super delicious, but also high protein and also super simple meals to make. It's a great way to support the channel as well. EatVeganOrDieTrying.com. I'll also put a link to that in the description below as well. And with that, my beautiful friends, that brings us to the end of another full day of eating. If you enjoyed it, give it a big old thumbs up. Let me know your thought in the comments below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you beautiful people in the very next episode. Team Young Week. CT Heavy. Die, my